take a little trip with me and hopefully you can see how the hood, suburbs, and main street are all connected. Enough respect, can I mean? We network across the globe cause it's a global market in case you didn't know. And since we all about information flow, let me be the first one to welcome you to Tech Zone with Paul Amadeus Lane. Let's talk tech, the technology changing the game. It's all good in the hood, it's everywhere. Now let's get to the show cause we live on air, yeah. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Tech Zone. I'm your host, Paul Amadeus Lane. Or as some of you call me, the czar of technology. I am so happy to have you with me today uh, here on the show. We got some great guests that's going to be joining us. I know I say that every week, but it's true. What makes shows so great is not me. It's the guest that I have. And in our second segment of the show, we're going to be joined by a CEO who understands how you have to keep up in technology to continue to have your business relevant. So you don't want to miss that coming up. And in our first segment, we're going to be joined by one of the brightest minds in technology. Uh, no doubt many of you have uh, seen uh, the movie, Hidden Figures. Sorry, saw the movie, seen the movie. Well, I get mixed up. English wasn't my best suit. And in that movie, you watch some very dynamic personalities who were smart. What if I tell you we have a real-life aerospace engineer amongst us now who is young in the prime of her career, who is not only changing the game when it comes to technology, but she's empowering others, too. Let me play a little bit about the guest we're going to have on. I remember my first crush. He was smart, handsome, funny, but slightly out of reach. And despite my flirtations, he just wasn't that into me. And although I thought that we were perfect, we all know that relationships work best when both parties are into each other. So imagine my journey into the land of Silicon Valley and venture capital. Now, what was our next guest talking about uh, when she made that speech? Well, instead of me guessing, why don't we ask her? And joining me right now is the co-founder and CEO of Stemboard. We're talking about the lovely and smart Aisha Bo. How are you doing, my dear? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. And, and Aisha... Um, we before we brought you on, we played a little snippet when you were at Platform, and you, and you kind of talked about you know the crush and how you uh, made an analogy when it comes to business. That was pretty smart. You know what, what made you think of, of of kind of putting that together with your business journey? That was awesome. Because it's just like dating. When you're looking for VCs, you want people who are into you in the same way that you're into them, and without that chemistry that natural attraction and ability to partner. Well, that's, that's true. That is so true. Well said. So as we look at your journey, which I think is amazing, when did you know, I mean, aerospace engineer, I mean, when did you know you wanted to, to pursue this as your, as your career? Was it something you were always interested in when you were younger? Uh, share that story with us, please. <laughs> Um, I was not voted the most likely to succeed in high school. Let's just get that out there. I was advised by my guidance counselor to pursue cosmetology because, in her opinion, I had never been a strong student. And it wasn't so much that there's anything wrong with that, but that was all that she could see for me. And so I ended up in community college, and I thought that I was going to be a business student because, hey, that's what all the kids are, cool kids are doing, right? They're studying business. Absolutely. And I received a C in economics. Mm, probably not the best. And I remember talking to my dad about it that evening, which I desperately tried to avoid the topic. I mean, I ate super fast. I was ready to clean my plate. I was just going to get out of there. And he asked me about my grades. 
And when I told him what happened, he said, well, why don't you take a math class? <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Why, why would I do that? And it doesn't really seem like a great suggestion. <laughs> and so he bribed me. And he said, okay, look, if you take it, I'll pay for it. And so I was like, okay, whatever. Like, fine. So I took that math class. And an interesting thing happened. That A in pre-algebra ended up becoming an A in algebra, which became an A in calculus and an A in calc 2. And I found myself in a situation where my professor said, maybe you should think differently about yourself and your life. And so that evening, I kind of went home and said, well, to heck with it, right? What if I just toss out everything that I think to be true about me? And so I made this list. And I have to find it because I know I have it packed away. And in, in it, I, um, I said, okay, well, if I thought about the wildest, most ambitious things I could think of, what would they be? And so the first was, I'm going to go to the University of Michigan. Because, I mean, it's an amazing school, right? Why not? Well, and number well two, the football team is kind of okay as suspect, but I'll leave that alone. We're talking about tech right now, but I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Uh, <laughs> oh. Absolutely, you're right. You're right. You got. You got. You got to give them the props, right? Um, I'm a, I'm a diehard Michigan fan. So, uh, so the second thing was okay. Well, I'm going to study. I'm going to study engineering, right? Because I've I've discovered that I have this math skill, and I should do something with it. And the third was, well, if I'm going to go to Michigan and I'm going to study engineering, I'm, I'm going to study aerospace engineering, not only because it was hard, but because I love science fiction. I love science. I mean, I love the concept of exploration. And I tacked that list on the back of my door and I saw it every single day while I was in community college. And today I can tell you that all of those things came true. And so it really wasn't because, you know, I was that 4.0 National Honor Society student. I was someone who realized kind of late in the game that I had a lot of potential that I wasn't leveraging simply because I bought into the narrative that I was being given. So you, you, you kind of had that aha moment when it came to your career. And how can ones recognize it? Because, you know, uh, we know a lot of people when they're on their journey, mm -hmm. sometimes they miss the boat of, of what they can become. And when that moment came up, did you kind of maybe resist it for a minute and say, well, I don't know, this may not be where I want to go, but what, what, what convinced you that, you know what, this is, this is where I want to go. And this is where I want to be. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm still convincing myself along the journey. I mean, there aren't that many young female African-American rocket scientists for a girl to aspire to be like, right. Absolutely. And when I was in engineering school, there aren't that many people that look, like me, nor have backgrounds that are non-traditional like mine. And so all along the way, I, I constantly felt as though I was an imposter. It was a struggle to feel comfortable. It was a struggle to feel confident. And even today, uh, running this company, I mean, I created this job and I decided what our focus was and the initiatives are. And at night, I still have to kind of say to myself, you're right. You you are good enough. You deserve to be here because it's it's difficult constantly operating in an environment where you are one of a few. And, you know, what, what I like about you, you too, and admire about you, Aisha, is that you do your homework. And I remember, um, again, going back to the, the platform um, summit where you're at, where you where you spoke, you did your homework about venture capital and also government funding. And, and, and that's kind of like thinking out of the box because I, I just got back from uh, CES um, a few months ago, a little over a month ago. And it's, it's all about venture capital, venture capital, angel, angel, angel investors, all this, all this. But, you know, you chose a different route and it was actually successful. That had to, you know, to, to be so young in your journey, you know, I'm just blown away that, that you realize that where some people still don't realize that. You know, I think that when you don't have access to the same opportunities as others, you make a way when there is none. And 
I had been an engineer. I was at NASA. I was an aerospace engineer for six years. And when I started the company with my partner, we went into the valley to raise money. But the VCs, well, they weren't feeling us. They said things like, we don't think that you guys can hit the projections that you make. They questioned the business model. They didn't really understand why we wanted to have a company that was technically proficient, but also was invested in having a social impact. It was, I think it was just a lot, right? And so then you're also looking at this young African-American female and, yeah. (laughs) And so for me, I said, well, I'm not willing to let my dream die because I can't find the capital. I'm going to look and see if there's an alternative. And there was. The same federal agencies that I worked in had programs that could assist me in becoming an entrepreneur. And that's not to say that I want to knock anyone who's able to raise venture capital. But let's be honest, not all money is good money. Absolutely. And for us as engineers who are very capable bidding on contracts, allowed me to develop a company with my partner where we own all of it. We've taken no outside investment. We're rapidly expanding. We're profitable. I mean, the whole business operates off of cash every month. It's unheard of. And we're also able to invest in the community. which I'm not so sure that we would have been able to do had we had a traditional board and taken outside investment and been responsible to some of the, you know, the VC firms in in the Valley. You know what? And when during, and I go back to your, to your um, um, speech at, at platform and, and some numbers that, that really blew me away was that how many people who, who get VC, uh, I think Harvard did a study that, 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 that that, that money is gone. And, and, And I like what you said about all money is not good money because, you know, that took me back to my domino playing game. You know, when you play a domino, it's like, all money ain't good money. You know, don't put that five down. You know, you might, it might cost you some, some points, but, but that makes a lot of sense. And w- again, you are paying it forward because not only um, are you, you know, doing this for your business, but you're also trying to help educate ones from K through 12 and at the HBCU uh, universities and everything. And uh, a lot of people don't, don't realize just how important STEM is. And, and please explain that to ones out there. You know, here in the United States, we are behind the curve, in my opinion, when it comes to STEM education. I, I think we're missing the boat. How do you feel about that? Oh, well, okay. So I'm going to chop that question up into several parts. Um, I agree with you. I think STEM education is absolutely essential to success. I mean, if you look around you, technology is pervasive right? You're not going to go far without basic technical literacy. If you're going to uh, fill out a job application at a local grocery store, it's going to be on the line. If you're going to do basic monitoring of your finances, a lot of the tools you need are going to be online. Right? People aren't really writing checks anymore or balancing their accounts by hand. They're doing it with QuickBooks and Excel and all sorts of tools. So for me, it's Not only teaching basic technical proficiency, but having individuals understand that, one, you don't need to graduate with a four-year degree to make money. This is a unique time in history where you can actually generate multi-million dollar businesses simply by having access to a digital platform. I mean, you see people all the time. They're making jewelry on Etsy. They're selling their own shoes on Shopify. So... I want to empower the next generation to think differently about their futures and their monetary opportunities by teaching them basic technical skills. Now, we run the spectrum. So at STEM Board, here we we teach a number of things. We recently partnered with Inroads, which is the nation's largest provider of internships for the historically underrepresented, to roll out our content in five cities where we have hardware and STEM content that's custom because our bread and butter is engineering and technical services. So we say we take these technologies that we use to deliver mature products and we turn that into content for youth. So that was a lot of words. What does that mean? So for example, in our program in the Bahamas, we taught the students engineering for five days at no cost for half the day. And then for the second half of the day, we taught them 
to apply the engineering to a problem of social impact. And at the end, they had to compete. The students came up with ideas such as the following. One, they wanted to create a blackout awareness detection application so that they could alert all of the individuals in a specific area if they were going to experience a power outage because there are people who needed to make sure that food didn't spoil. There were elderly who needed to make sure their medications were safe. There are people who needed assistance if they didn't have power and they couldn't do basic things that maybe they, you know, had to uh, have operate machinery and whatever, whatnot, and that would represent outages. But this entire system could be adopted across the entire Caribbean. And if that was the case, those four students selling it at 50 cents could not only pay for their entire college degree, but put a little money in the bank to start a company. Another group put sensors on drones for air quality because they noticed that there was a higher instance of cancer in their community. And they wanted to do studies to see if there was a correlation between the dump fires and an elevated level of carcinogens in the air. We had another group that was looking at low cost ways to detect early signs of breast cancer. And so when you empower the youth to develop technologies to solve their problems, you not only advance the state of the art, but you're able to advance the community. That makes a lot of sense. And, and you know, when it comes to technology, when we think of technology in one's, uh, the younger generation, we think of gaming and, and all these other things. But this takes it a step further uh, to really be uh, uh, productive members of society and helping out. And you brought up a very good point, too, when it comes to um, in, in the Caribbean, when uh, if the power went out. Because myself being confined to a wheelchair, electronic wheelchair user, if the power went out for a substantiated period of time, you know, we're kind of messed up. So I'm so glad that, that, that your organization is doing something like this because, you know, it, for so long we haven't had anything like that. And what's been kind of the, the feedback from the ones uh, in the program in the Bahamas? Uh, they they had to, to really show appreciation for it because I wish this was back when I was in school that I could have this, but they really have to be very appreciative of what you guys are doing over there. Well, I mean, it's a testament to the fact that we're expanding it not only to many islands in the Caribbean, but into the U.S. I mean, this year in the U.S., we have Atlanta, D.C., Cincinnati, Chicago, and Detroit, all of whom are going to be exposed to the exact same program because of the success that we had in the Caribbean. It's not only just the Bahamas, it's the Bahamas, Bermuda, Cayman. This year, we're going to be bringing in St. Lucia. We've been talking to Jamaica. It's catching on like wildfire. Because people understand that technology is not some abstract thing. It's tangible. It means that you can go to a workshop and learn about a motion sensor and then create an alarm system for your home. Or that same piece of technology could be used as a backup sensor for a car. And that you don't have to be in a college or in an advanced degree program to acquire that skill. Wow. Like you said, we live in a very technological time where, you know, we don't have to spend spend four years in college. And and especially, you know, if we look at what's going on here here in the United States, a lot of people don't at the, at the conference when you and I were at at the, the Tech Connects um, uh, summit by Black Enterprise that they put on. They don't realize that automation is, is getting ready to, to really have a tremendous footprint uh, when it comes yeah. when, it, when it comes to even. Uh, Working at, at at McDonald's or Burger King, there's a McDonald's in Arizona right now that that's fully automated, and some of the jobs that that I used to get when I first graduated from high school, while I'm in college or technical school, they're not there no more. So the kids yes. really, the kids really gotta you know step it up a little bit. Yes, but they're being replaced by new jobs. I mean, if anyone hears this video, the thing I want them to take away is this is a person who created their job. I started off with a traditional position. I learned that I could begin to create. I could innovate on where I already was. And I created my own job. When autonomy comes into play, yeah, some of those traditional positions will be 
replaced, but you still need people to design and program those systems. Absolutely. There are different skill sets that are needed in order to support that type of innovation. And they're accessible. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we this time that we live in is, is, is amazing. You know, I'm glad we're living in this technological age. And just to see where we're going is amazing. And before we continue, I just want to I have to look at my notes of this because, I mean, you have won a, a number of awards and, and I want to give you some props right now. Uh, the Women's Chamber of Commerce Emerging Star Award, uh, Silicon Valley's 40 Under 40, 2015 Diversity uh, Honoree, NASA Engineering Honoree, Silicon Valley National Coalition of 100 Black Women in Technology of the Year. I'm not finishing. Here we go. And the National Black Engineers 21st Century Twelve Blazers in Aviation and Aerodynamics Award. Amongst the other things, I mean, you have to sit back some time. Do you just take take in a breath and say to yourself, "Wow, you know, I, I've accomplished a lot. I'm not done yet, but I've accomplished a lot." And and kind of take time to appreciate what you how far you've come. I should, but the reality is that's what I did yesterday, right? So, <laughs> I I just feel like. We're living in such an amazing time. Think about it. 50 years ago, I never would have been able to be educated in the same way as I was today. The opportunities that I have, my parents didn't have. And still, there are so, I mean, there's just so few of people who can go and create businesses and be supported. And so my passion is to help others get to where I am. I would love it if people go and watch videos like the platform video and they go and they start their own company and call me. I will help you. I will do my best to tell you how exactly it was that I got this company off the ground. And so, yes, I'm incredibly grateful for all of the individuals who have honored me by acknowledging my work and my contributions to the field, Paul, but I still feel like there's so much left to do. I hear you. I hear you. We got to keep that hustle passion up because we got we got to keep on going. And uh, STEM board, how how can ones uh, find out more information about about STEM board and and some of the great things that you're doing with the universities with with K through twelve kids and uh, just just some of the the amazing things that are going on. How can they find out more about it? Sure. I encourage everyone to go online. Go to www.stemboard.com. That's S-T-E-M-B-O-A-R-D dot com. And check us out. You can also follow us on social media. So we're at STEM Board on Facebook, STEM Board on Instagram, STEM Board on Twitter. And for the behind the scenes look, you can follow me. And my handles are just as easy. Uh, I'm at A-R Bo on Twitter and Aisha Bo on Instagram and Aisha Bo on Facebook. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Before I let you go, um, you love technology. You love science fiction. Your favorite science fiction movie of all times? What is it? Of all times. All times. Yeah, I'm making oh it hard. God. Well, well, you know what? I'll give you a, a top three, top five. I love how this list is just getting longer. Top ten? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? Or, or, what what was some of the most? Okay, the most so memorable? there's obviously there's the classics, right? You got to go with the Star Wars. Absolutely. Uh, I. Won't be ashamed to say that I actually cried during the latest Star Wars movie when they handed Luke the lightsaber. My mom was like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, you don't <laughs> understand. He's been gone for so long. Um, I also like uh, Contact. I think that's 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 pretty great. Um, and I also like, like the sci-fi movies that include aliens that are kind of scary. Like I love Alien with Sigourney Weaver. So that's like three different types of um, sci-fi films but you know one of the things that we we didn't touch on um, was hidden figures right oh yes and, absolutely let's talk about that yeah, we have a few moments to talk about that absolutely got it so one of my uh, absolute favorite things is seeing these narratives come to the mainstream and so NASA has this legacy of incredible women who've paved the way for science and technology like Katherine Johnson and the women who are featured in the film. And so being able to see that on the screen, 
I can't describe the, the feeling to you because I, I lived it, right? I, I lived in an environment where we had about 60 African-American employees out of 1,200 at the NASA facility and even fewer who were technical and who were supporting programs that were either space-related or science or tech. And so now to have such a powerful tool to encourage and inspire the youth so they can see us, so they can see people like me who represent mentors that I didn't have when I was going through school is absolutely incredible. You know, and I'm so glad you reminded me uh, to bring that up because, uh, you know, I really, definitely really, really wanted to touch on that, you know, especially, you know, where we're at in the stream of time. And um, you never know, decades from now, you know, that hopefully that gap gets uh, gets uh, inch closer and closer. Uh, ones like you, you know, leading the forefront, I really believe that that will, that will definitely um, be a reality. And uh, one other yeah, Star Wars um, trivia. I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna blow your mind with this. All right, you ready? All right. Okay. Okay. Who is? Who do you think Ray's family is? Um, in the new Star Trek series, who, who do you think our family is? Now this is inside stuff. Now, 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 everybody, this is world exclusive. Who do you think? Of, uh, do you want to know or do you want to wait and watch it? I, we'll see. Now you told me I gotta know. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Ray is a Kenobi. Now, now, follow me on this. Yes. Remember when after Return of the Jedi, there was no Jedi Order anymore. I'm sorry, after the um um uh, Revenge of the Revenge of the Jedi. When, right, uh, Olivia. When Obi Wan left and you mm -hmm. know, he was he was not to the Jedi code anymore. So he can have a family mm -hmm. if he wanted to. He can do whatever he wants. Think about I think, she, I think she's a Kenobi. I think she's his granddaughter. Now, remember when they were on the uh on the kind of like the, the Death Star looking thing on Star Wars? She kind of yeah. did when she did the Jedi mind trick. Then, then it remind you of Obi Wan when Obi Wan did in uh, Star Wars: New Hope. It does, yes, yes. And because I was sitting there thinking, like, why is she so powerful? Right? Like, who who are her people? Yeah. So that so that <laughs> I, I, that's my hypothesis right there. So if it's true, okay. you know, it's pretty cool. If not, well, it's pretty good. Uh, better call. If it's true, I'll have to. I will be sending you some movie tickets. Something. Uh, uh, this is a pretty good urban myth, but hey, it's great talking to you, Aisha, and uh, much success. And we love to have you back on to talk about more things that you're doing later on in the year. And you inspire a lot of people. And uh, keep up the great work, my dear. Thank you. I absolutely would love to. We have some amazing technical partnerships. STEM board rolling out in 2017. So stay tuned. That was the lovely Aisha Bo. I told you, one of the bright minds that we have in the world, doing great things with their company, Stemboard. Make sure you connect with them. Check them out on social media. She's changing the game. She's changing the world, helping kids be educated and empowering and paying it forward. Aisha, keep it up. And plus, I love the fact that she knows Star Wars lore and loves sci-fi. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's not, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, when we get back, we're going to talk about a CEO and how he realizes his company needs to stay current when it comes to technology and how it helps his business grow, customer engagement, you name it. And coming up in the last segment of the show, big announcement about the tech zone. You don't want to miss that. We'll be back in two and two here on the Tech Zone.